Welcome to the Entrepreneurial Mindset Community Podcast. I'm your host, Ron Murphy. The purpose of the podcast is to have an open discussion around entrepreneurship with a focus on the food industry. My family has owned and operated grocery stores in the southern New Jersey region for 45 years. During that time, we've undergone a lot of changes in everything from locations and facilities to people, customers, and business partners. The one constant over the years has been that we are committed to serving our community, all stakeholders, with the best brands, latest trends, excellent service, and at a reasonable price. In a future episode, I plan to explore what being an independent supermarket in today's world means and the challenges that go along with it. And today, we're going to get to know Larry Walker, President and CEO of Balfour Farms. Welcome to the Entrepreneurial Mindset Community. Today, our guest is Larry Walker, uh, CEO and President of Balfour. Balford is a 130-year-old, privately held, diversified food distribution company headquartered in Burlington, New Jersey. They specialize in providing customized warehousing and final mile uh, store delivery services to quick service restaurant chains and also specializing in direct to store delivery of dairy products marketed under Balford's own Rosenberger dairy brand to various chains and independent retail food service customers throughout the Northeast U.S. Larry, our guest today, joined Balford in 2015 bringing experience in progressive leadership with top food and beverage companies such as Pepsi, Nestle, Dean Foods. Larry was a graduate of St. Joe's University Hobbs School of Business, where he received his Bachelor's of Science in Food Marketing. He was a participant in the Food Marketing Cooperative Education Program. Larry is a member of the Mid-Atlantic Food Trade Organization, the New Jersey Food Processors Association, the Pennsylvania Restaurant and Lodging Association, and he's also a proud father and husband. He resides in Malvern, PA with his wife, Lori, daughter, Avery, and twin boys, Larry and Luca. Larry, welcome today to the Entrepreneurial Mindset community. Uh, thanks for being uh, a, a part of our uh, podcast today and uh, looking forward to our conversation. Well, thank you, Ron. I'm, uh, I'm honored to be here and I'm you know, really excited to, uh, to, to share you know, my experiences and perspective on the food industry and, um, you know, I, I appreciate you, you know, giving me this opportunity to, to speak to you today. So I, I wanted to kind of start with about uh, how you got started in the food industry, um, talking about some of your early days, early experiences. Uh, why did you choose that path? Or, you know, in some cases, did it choose you? Yeah. So I, I got started in the food industry. You know, what kind of the backstory is, um, you know, as I was exploring options for for college, um, you know, there were various majors and, and various schools that, you know, were in consideration. And, um, you know, what kind of first introduced me to the food industry was I had uh, you know, two family friends that were in the food industry. They were also graduates of St. Jude's University. So I started to explore and learn more about, you know, the food industry, um, you know, through this exploration to, you know, to consider St. Joe's uh, as my college choice. So I, as you stated, I ended up joining um you know, St. Joe's uh, Food Marketing Cooperative Education Program and, and really starting to get kind of the backbones of, you know, my learning uh, through the food marketing um, education that, that St. Joe's offers. But also what, what really was, uh, you know, something that kind of helped br- bring me into the food industry was the, this unique cooperative education program where, you know, I was, uh, you know, getting real world uh, experience in various internships. And, and for me, those internships were, you know, more hands-on uh, in the field, uh, you know, whether it was in sales or, you know, a combination of sales and, and operations. Um, you know, one of my internships happened to be in uh, Ireland, uh, working for an Irish food company. So, you know, these uh, experiences coupled with uh, the education, you know, really laid a good foundation for me um, and, and really, piqued my engagement and interest in the food industry. And then from there, you know, I, I uh, you know, was fortunate to, to have an opportunity to work in, you know, various capacities uh, with uh, what was, Le- was part of Dean Foods, which is Lehigh Valley Dairy uh, here in the Philadelphia area. And then, you know, my career took me up to New England and the Boston area where I worked for Pepsi and Nestle. And then, um, you know, as time passed, I had an opportunity to come back to Dean Foods um, you know, here in the, the greater Philadelphia area. And that's when I was introduced to Balfour, uh, which is, you know, the, the, the place I call home today and, you know, a place that I intend to call home for many years. And the food industry for me has been, you know, an industry that I'm very passionate about. Um, you know, I, I, I couldn't be more satisfied to, to work in the field. And, um, 
you know, it, it's something that, you know, is, is, is really a, a, a real bright spot amongst many other bright spots in my life. And that's exactly what we kind of wanted to talk today about is your passion behind Balford, behind uh, your own career. In terms of experiences that you've had so far, what would you consider some of the best experiences that led you to to Balford, to, to being the president CEO where you are now? You, you touched a little bit on, you know, some of... Um, some of the uh, the different jobs you've had and some of the locations and stuff like that. But are, is there anything that sticks out in your mind of things that really kind of endeared you to the industry or an experience or a partnership that uh, that really sticks out for you? I think when I look and, and think about it, it, it really started back when I was a child and when I was a kid, you know, playing sports, working multiple jobs, you know, kind of developing that sense of teamwork, leadership, uh, you know, hard work ethic. You know, I had uh, tremendous parenting and kind of family resources that I, I feel for me helped me develop this fierce work work ethic uh, combined with this, you know, really positive attitude and a passion for accomplishing, you know, success. And uh, and I think that kind of for me has been something regardless of the role with a company, you know, that's something that I, I feel has been, you know, a, a real influence, uh, you know, in my career progression um you know, to, to now being the president and CEO of Balford. Uh, I also will say that I, you know, had these diverse work experiences that gave me exposure, development, training. Um, you know, some of them were stretch roles that I worked myself into. You know, some were, you know, more of a natural fit, but, you know, really getting that diversified experience that, you know, stretched me at times, you know, helped me build perspective uh, was important. And then in each of those roles, I found that, you know, I was uh, able to develop uh, some mentorship. So I had tremendous, uh, you know, mentorship throughout my career. Um, and, and, and what's I think is unique about it is I've been able to maintain that same sense of mentorship, you know, where I, I might be at a, a, a different company, but that relationship with, you know, that, that mentor, the boss that I had in, in that previous experience has remained consistent. So for, for me, um, you know, that's that's definitely played a big role. And that's also something that motivates me, uh, knowing the impact that motivates me to want to give back and do the same for, for others. So, you know, when we talk about part of the, the purpose of today to be able to give back and uh, educate and bring perspective to folks that are considering, you know, this food industry field, you know, mentorship and, and giving back, I think is an important um you know, is an, is an important part. Yeah, that's huge. Part of the purpose at Murphy's Markets is community and developing community and just being able to give back that relationship. You know, uh, other people call it social currency. Someone helped you uh, get a start or not, not you specifically, but you as the individual, me, and just trying to give back, you know, passing that information along and, and, and giving people a platform or an opportunity that um, that they may not be 100%, you know, trained or, or ready to just jump into, but they learn as they go, and, and you're there to to really help guide them along the way. So, um, so I appreciate you sharing that. And and in terms of somebody that would just just be getting started in the industry, whether that's you know as a part time job or somebody that really wants to kind of make that commitment as to being a um, a long-term, you know, food industry veteran. What what type of advice would you would you provide somebody like that? Yeah, I, I think the things that come to mind, um, you know, when it when it comes to kind of giving someone advice about, you know, th th this food industry path um, is, you know, coming into it with goals and you know, a game plan. I think is uh, you know one important part. I think when it comes to development, it, you know, focusing in on experiences and skill development. Uh, is another thing that's important. You know, I was, you know, particularly able to, you know, learn and develop, uh, you know, different experience through these different experiences. So I think that, that was something that, um, you know, I, I would say is important. Definitely work hard and expect to sacrifice, uh, you know, because the, the food industry, as, as you know, Ron, um, you know, it's a services, uh, you know, it's a services and people business. And, you know, we're part of the critical food supply chain and, um, you know, we support the, 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 for, for, for Balfour and we're supporting, you know, businesses that are supporting, you know, those that are, you know, that are, that are seeking, you know, food and, uh, you know, you know, food and nutrition 
And, uh, you know, it's, it's something that, you know, we, we, we've got to be there when our customers and the consumers need us to be there. And, you know, through that, you know, there's definitely hard work and sacrifice that, you know, is, is going to come uh, through that. Um, I already mentioned building mentorship, you know, and that, that just doesn't happen. You know, it has to be a two way street and it has to be more intentional. Um, but, but I think building mentorship is important. Another thing I learned over time is, you know, as, uh, you know, as I developed, you know, as people kind of go about, you know, trying to figure out where their, their strengths and preferences are, I think understanding that is, um, is important, you know, for satisfaction and for advancement. So, you know, some people are, are stronger as an individual contributor versus a manager. There's also the, you know, there's also these additional components like, you know, uh, in-office work, out-of-office work, traveling, no traveling, you know, bigger company, you know, smaller company, you know, family business versus a larger, you know, corporate, publicly traded corporation, like all those things, you know, trying to figure out kind of where the best, you know, fit is for, you know, someone to, to succeed and be satisfied, you know, comes with also some awareness and some perspective building that, you know, the, the individual need to, 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 to figure out over time. And then um, the last thing I would say here is also very important is, you know, regardless of the role and kind of, you know, people's goals or past, um, you know, taking care of, you know, yourself physically and emotionally is also very important. Um, you know, so that's something I would say is, you know, anyone, you know, considering this career or any career, I, I do think, uh, you know, that's an important component to satisfaction and success. Yeah, we saw that a lot during COVID, you know, uh, the, you, you get people that uh, were isolated and it kind of really honed in or, or made us focus more on that uh, that need of community, which is something we at Murphy's try to do is, is try to build, you know, around community and, um, and, and keep that at the heart of the things that we do. Not just saying it and, and from a marketing standpoint, but it, 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 you're, like you said, it's important to kind of have that relationship or have a, um, you know, just to, just be able to connect with your customer, your employee, your company on a human level and, and, and putting people first really came to light. I think during COVID where, you know, safety was an issue and and that type of thing. So I appreciate you sharing that in terms of uh, college, you know, you obviously went to St. Joe's well known in the area the food marketing program, very prestigious, considered one of the tops in the country and in college and and in terms of your experience with St. Joe's and, and some of the relationships you have maybe with professors or people from the program, obviously we're taught theories, we're taught things in, in college to, to try to implement and we bring that into our jobs and it's on us to try to v- explain what we're doing and why we're doing it. I, I read a lot of, about some of the, the marketing program's intention to allow an exec to, to basically train an executive or be able to train an, a food industry professional to kind of work with the business with the with the uh, and have a social impact and I think that's imp- an important part of what St. Joe's is about in terms of theories and, and things that you learned in school have you found throughout your career that there are things that that do work and that, that there's things that may you know just maybe too ideal, uh, so to speak, in order to actually have a real world application. I guess, I guess the question really is, you know, what, what have you taken from St. Joe's and your experience there and been able to successfully apply, you know, in your, in your food industry career so far? When I think about, you know, kind of the transition or progression from, you know, the learning and, and direct experience, uh, while being a student at St. Joe's university. And I think about, you know, kind of where I'm at, now in, in, in my career and, you know, how my mindset, um, you know, may have changed or, you know, how I've been able to, to build perspective as it relates to, you know, improving business practices, you know, kind of building success. Um, you know, some of the things that I think are uh, important to, to talk about here are things that are kind of more learned and experienced, uh, you know, that, that I, um, you know, that I particularly see, um, you know, having a big impact um, in these particular areas. And the first is, uh, is teamwork, um, you know, more we and us uh, versus I and me. Um, you know, when you think about the, 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 the food business or kind of the businesses we're in, you know, they're highly complex, highly fast paced, you know, there's a, a significant amount of, uh, you know, coordination and touch points that, 
interact on a daily basis, you know, to perform the services and deliver the goods that are that are needed to to, to have the supply chain function. Um, and and in general, you know, having teamwork uh, in all aspects of the business is uh, is is I feel very important. Um, and kind of to take that a step further, it's it's uh, you know at the leadership and manager level, it's you know walking in um, the shoes of your 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 your, uh, your staff, you know, walking in the shoes of you know the folks in in any level or function of the company, um, you know, getting down to the front line and and having engagement and being open to listen and 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 really thinking about you know ways to connect with the uh, you know the associates that are going to be most directly involved in helping to kind of deliver the, you know, the execution uh, or the, you know, collaboration to, 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 to ultimately improve practices or, you know, deliver continued success. Um, so I do feel like walking in, you know, your team's shoes and, 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 and being able to kind of get down there and, and listen and learn is very important. And then uh, another thing here is, you know, something I've, I've seen and learned is, uh, you know, collaboration, uh, having a collaborative uh, mindset when it comes to, you know, customer, you know, customer relations, customer service, um, you know, as well, kind of with, you know, the vendors that are supporting our business, um, you know, having collaborative, uh, you know, having kind of a collaborative attitude towards, you know, the, the, the relationship is something that, you know, I've seen has, um, you know, mutual and optimal success outcomes. Um, that are, you know, that, that, that are things that, you know, over time, you know, through different experiences and different roles, uh, that's something that's been a consistent theme. And, you know, I think it's, uh, you know, learned on, on the job and, you know, something that I've seen has been, um, you know, very, uh, you know, very effective and, and you know, it help, helps the results. In a real world application, you know, your team's looking to you for leadership. We saw that, again, during COVID. They're looking to you for answers. They're looking for you for direction and guidance in most cases. And I think you're right on with, um, you know, it being a team environment, but there needs to be that that leader of the team. And I, I think that's something that, you know, you need that experience in order to to really vet out what type of leadership behaviors work and, and which ones don't. So, um, yeah, I appreciate, I appreciate sharing that. In terms of the food industry overall, since you started, how have you seen it change? Obviously, there's been a lot of rapid technology advancements over COVID and, and things like that. But what are some of the, the major changes that you've observed over, over your career so far? I, I think when I, uh, when I look back on this emergence of, uh, you know, these growth categories that are bringing a lot of innovation, um, plant-based milk happens to be, you know, one that, you know, that I particularly uh, see, you know, more and more in, 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 in you know, in the daily business here at Balford, um, you know, which I, I think that's been a, an emergence, uh, you know, as consumer, you know, as consumer preferences, uh, you know, have changed, you know, there's also been innovation that, you know, has come and, you know, it's been consistent innovation in these, uh, you know, kind of expanded categories, uh, you know, within various departments in the store. So that that's something I think is, uh, you know, been interesting uh, and it's exciting at the same time. Yeah, it seems to seems to be ever changing. So I just kind of wanted to switch gears a little bit, talk a little bit more about Balford. In terms of Balford, in 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 reacting, I guess, to some of these trends, you had mentioned plant based milk and some of the other plant based dairy categories and things like that. You're also pretty heavily involved in giving brands an opportunity, kind of giving back with St. Joe's and. And you had mentioned uh, to me in, in other conversations about Rutgers and and some of the innovation center, uh, the innovation center, and some of the involvement that you have there. In terms of a, an upcoming brand, it seems like there's a new food brand coming out weekly. W- what would Balford look for uh, in terms of um, uh, signing a new brand on, or or what what types of trends, I guess, or or what qualifications for a new brand? You know, what would it take to, to sign a new brand on with, with Balford? I think for for, for us, um, you know, for, for me particularly, you know, who's kind of spent more and more time in kind of this area, um, you know, is where we can kind of discover and, and, and you know, try to explore relationships with local uh, or entrepreneur-led businesses, uh, you know, where Balford 
or even myself personally can, you know, help, you know, these businesses or, you know, these entrepreneurs uh, advance, uh, you know, their mission uh, through whether it's perspective building, mentorship, you know, operational execution and, and helping them get to market. Um, but, you know, I think really it's just over time, you know, as you get to interact and, uh, and learn more about the people, um, you know, I think that's important, uh, you know, and then also, you know, where the product has a, a, a fit naturally and, and we, Balford as an operator, can, you know, successfully help, you know, that company, um, you know, deliver the growth that they're looking for. You know, we, we, we would, you know, we would be interested in that. Uh, but at the same time, you know, where, you know, there might be um, businesses or brands that, you know, Alfred might not be the best fit for, you know, it's not to say, you know, myself or other folks on the leadership team, you know, wouldn't stay involved or engaged or, you know, trying to help kind of the local food ecosystem or this entrepreneurial ecosystem that exists. Um, you know, it, it's definitely something that, um, you know, we, we see being here to stay. And for a company that's been here for 130 years, Balfour's always taken a lot of pride in kind of exploring beyond the kind of the core part of the business. And, you know, being a, you know, privately held, um, kind of a management, you know, led decision-making group, uh, you know, we can be flexible in making decisions or trying things, um, you know, that are, you know, that, that are going to be some, you know, learn and see, or some that, Hey, these are natural fits. Let's, you know, let, let's really, you know, move this along. So I think that's, um, that's definitely something that, you know, we, um, you know, that, that we look for, um, you know, when it comes to, you know, when it comes to, to brands. And then the other thing is, is, you know, we, we, we have a business that's, you know, 50% of it's, you know, more, selling and distributing brands uh, into the food service and retail trade. But then, you know, we also have the other uh, half of our businesses, you know, warehousing and distribution services where, you know, we're going to work on behalf of the customer, you know, food service, retail uh, customer to, you know, provide, you know, the services needed to support their, um, you know, objectives with inventory and service uh, of, of, of goods into their store. So, you know, we also, um, you know, are, 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 are always looking at, at opportunities and, you know, ways to partner with, um, you know, businesses that are, you know, out there that, you know, would find value in our, you know, what I would call versatile uh, operations and, um, you know, our, our distribution network here um, in, the, uh, in the greater mid-Atlantic. Yeah, I know we, uh, speaking from experience, um, we've relied on you on a, a number of different uh, uh, situations and you guys always come through for us. So uh, we definitely value that partnership and, and value the work that you guys do to, uh, you know, deliver us fresh product uh, on, on a regular basis. Uh, you had mentioned a little bit during uh, the last uh, question about growth plans. And I just wanted to kind of talk to you or touch touch base on some of the plans that Balford may have in terms of growth or opportunities that you guys see in, in today's current market? Yeah, I will say kind of before I get into the question, you know, one thing that I re really fortunate, I feel very fortunate at Balford um, is, you know, growth and, you know, continued success and the opportunities, you know, really, you know, don't happen without uh, the leadership team. And, you know, we, we've got a, such a great group of, experience and dedicated, um, you know, warehouse associates, driver associates, supervisors, managers, you know, people that are passionate, uh, committed and, you know, come to work every day and, um, and do an outstanding job. So, you know, I, I do have to say that kind of the backdrop to, to, you know, all of our historical current and, and future success, you know, really, you know, comes to, to, to fruition through, you know, our, our people and, and, and the, the folks and, you know, in the company that are going to help us achieve, um, you know, the things that we set out to achieve, but more specifically, you know, the things that I, I see us focusing on and, you know, that are priorities. Um, some of them are, you know, new, you know, new things we're going to explore more. Uh, some of them are, you know, doing more, of, you know, what we're doing now, just, you know, with, uh, you know, with some more focus and, and, and advancement. 
Um, but you know, the one thing that I'll start talking start talking about is uh, kind of the, the whole topic of corporate social responsibility, um, and that's something that you know we feel is important to our business, to our employees, to the you know communities we serve. So whether it's sustainability, you know, what, what can we do to be a more sustainable uh, company? Um, you know, how you know how do we increase our diversity, equity, inclusion, and how do we you know support the communities we serve. So that's kind of, you know, definitely a, a thing that's important to um, our future plans and, and, and things that we're focused on as a company. Uh, I know I've mentioned it a couple of times, but I'm going to mention it again. Um, you know, we, we want to continue to invest in our people. You know, so a lot of times when, we, you know, when the question about growth and opportunity uh, comes up, you know, a lot of times the question's answered with, you know, it's this product or this customer, uh, you know, we, you know, when we think of growth and opportunities here, you know, we, you know, we, we think of it, you know, very broadly, um, you know, because the whole thing is to come together to, to, to be sustainable and, and, and produce the, the, the best for, for all involved. But I think investing in our people and the culture of the company, making this, you know, making Balfour a great place to work over and over and over is uh is is always part of our plan and it's a continued priority um the third thing is uh you know we, we are a you know a, a, a services provider of goods and, and um you know we really on the operations side you know we need to continue to invest and in, and in, in advance our operations um so that could be continuous improvement uh technology equipment and you know, th those things are, are really going to help us improve our service, uh, you know, improve the safety of our safety of our employees, uh, increase the productivity and create an environment where, you know, the workforce and, and our collective employee base is satisfied um, and, and, and happy with the work they're doing. Um, and, and that's something that, you know, we, we continue to invest in and commit to. And then on the kind of on the revenue side, you know, the things that you know come to mind uh, as we look into the future, you know, that we would consider is, um, you know, where there might be acquisition opportunities that present themselves, you know, where there might be synergies in our you know, distribution network, where we can, you know, see a, a significant expansion of the products that, you know, we would bring to market. Like those are some things that come to mind, um, you know, kind of on an acquisition front. We also, uh, through the Rosenberger brand, it's obviously a well-known uh, consumer brand here in the, the, the greater mid-Atlantic. Uh, you know, we are, we are exploring uh, ways to, to create licensing partnerships uh, outside the dairy category um, with the brand. And I think that's something that uh, is new, um, you know, and it's exciting at the same time. And then uh, the, the, the last thing I would say is, you know, plans to expand our capacity and capabilities operationally to service our existing customers and, you know, help support their growth. And, um, you know, at the same time, you know, creating an environment um, operationally that, you know, gives us the best opportunity to develop um, more impactful new business over time. Um, you know, that's something that I think is uh, kind of on our, on our radar. And this is, you know, this is stuff that, you know, some some of it, like I said, is kind of part of what, you know, we have been doing and just doing a little bit more intentional, you know, but we're not going to stop doing the things that we do well today, um, you know, such as, you know, providing great service and, you know, quality products and value to our existing customers and our, you know, in, in our both of our businesses. You know, these are just some things that I think stand out. Um you know, and things that are required an extra level of uh, intention and focus, um, and we'll do so for, for for years to come. Yeah, that's very interesting and exciting. I, um, you, you touched a little bit on uh, your people, which obviously that's very important to Balford. It's important to Murphy's as well. I think, you know, again, during COVID, we really uh, were forced to kind of look internally and see, you know, what, what can we do to make the employee experience uh, more fulfilling, more uh, engaging that type, those types of things. We, we did that on, we did that. I know over the last few years, we've been really, you know, uh, having a lot of conversation around how do we make our experience better and, and, and track and retain. Um, that's, that's a major, obviously, um, 
it's a major factor in the retail and distribution business. Given that, you know, there, there's all these variables and uh, that the retail distribution business is never really ever the same, uh, maybe not even on a daily basis, on an hourly basis. Uh, you know, it seems like the best laid plans uh, for a day or for a week can, can kind of get away. But but what where do you draw your, your inspiration from, Larry? Where, you know, in terms of this business and what continues uh, what, what helps you to continue on and wh- where do you draw inspiration in terms of from the food industry or f- maybe from family or from th- something external? What, what, what motivates you on, on a daily basis? Yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, when I think about coming to work, uh, you know, when I think about what, you know, what we do, it's really worth serving. And for me, it's, it's serving and leading others, um, you know, and having a positive impact in, in people's lives. Um, that's very important to me, um, while at the same time supporting, you know, my family and, and being there for my family as, a, you know, as a, you know, as a father, as a husband and as a CEO and the family stretches, you know, beyond just home, you know, it's the, it's the group of people that, you know, we've created here that make Balford a, a special place to work. So, you know, for me, it's kind of a combination of, you know, family, employees, customers, you know, the communities we serve, you know, all these touch points are, are you know, for, for me, uh, you know, what makes this uh, business unique and, you know, what makes it, you know, something that I'm very passionate for. And, you know, like as an opera, you know, to, for me to have an opportunity as an owner and an executive leader of the company alongside, you know, the, the, the team that we have here to further develop and, and grow Balford, um, you know, and accomplish great things that will lead the company into, you know, another hundred years, you know, that's, that's a really special place to be. And, you know, I, I feel very fortunate, uh, you know, throughout my career um, to, you know, have the opportunities like the one I have now, um, you know, the, the company had, you know, really kind of, you know, come up with a plan, you know, to you know, continue the succession of the business and, um you know, I feel very fortunate to be in the position that I'm in today and inspired to, uh, you know, to, to continue to, you know, to do the things that are, are best for the company, uh, best for our customers, the communities and, and be there to, you know, to be a, to be there to be great for my family as well. Larry, thank you so much for giving us a few minutes of your time today and for the insights on this podcast. Folks, if you want to reach out to Larry, you can find him on LinkedIn. That's all the time we have for today. Make sure you follow the podcast and subscribe to our channel to stay up to date on the latest entrepreneurial mindset community. I'm your host, Ron Murphy. You can also find me on LinkedIn. Let me know in the comments what you thought of today's episode, and we'll see you next time.